Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I'm going to attempt to land the first stage of the rocket that I will either call Blue Saturn or Marta based on the suggestions in the comments to the previous video about this rocket uh, because if you missed the previous video this is a Saturn V rocket that's uh, converted to use the engines from Blue Origin, so BE4 engines on the first stage and BE3Us on the second stage. I just noticed that these are poking out um, uh, because I replaced them so that they would be in pairs. Uh, so Blue Saturn is more to the point because it's a Blue Origin Saturn V rocket and will make, make it clear. However, Marta is more artistic, if you will, uh, instead of being literal. Uh, so that might be better. Marta is Mars in Spanish, and since I tend to launch from Tampico, my sort of personal launch site is in Tampico in Mexico and across the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, I tend to launch across to the Bahamas to land stuff on the Bahamas, but anyway, that's another story. So yeah, Marta would be better in that case, but for now I'm undecided about the two. And so probably in the title I'll go with Blue Saturn because that's a little bit clearer to everybody what the configuration is. So the goal here is to land the first stage and with the BE4 engines we can do that. They have multiple ignitions and they have some throttling. What I wanted to do was to reduce the payload here because after all uh, if we're going to land the first stage we can't carry all 60 tons I tested it with to the moon. This, uh, this had a capacity of 60 tons to the moon. All I really want is for it to be able to carry the 48 tons that Saturn V did to the moon while recovering the first stage. That seems reasonable, right? And actually it wasn't 48 tons. It was, uh, uh, that included the launch escape system, so it was really 45 tons. But we'll say 48. We sort of know that with uh, that kind of payload, uh, we can, we have about a thousand meters per second left in the S4B stage after transferring to the moon. So that means that we can use 1,000 less, or we, we probably should have some margin on that, uh, in the S1C stage, or S whatever we call this stage, S1D stage, fine. Uh, BE4 is D is fourth letter of the alphabet, so that works. So we're going to reserve, let's say, 800 meters per second in here, and then decouple, and then turn this around and have it head back. I've got... Uh, these little thrusters here, which use methane and oxygen, 2.7 kilonewtons only. And they're positioned like that because that makes it easiest for them to turn it. If I put them flush, uh, that actually makes it a little bit harder for them to turn the vehicle. Uh, but I still wanted to make it somewhat aerodynamic. And there's a whole business of where I have to put it in relation to these separation motors and those fins. That's another thing. I did add a controller on here. And I went with this 10.1 meter instrument unit that's apparently from Katniss's mod. And that's three tons. Probably, considering this is a modern rocket, we should replace both that and the Saturn instrument unit with things that are much lighter. Uh, for a modern rocket, we don't need them that heavy. So, yeah, that'll be something to do later on. I'll have to reevaluate those particular pieces of it. Otherwise, I'm fairly happy with tankage masses. And I also have landing legs from uh, Kerbal Reusability Expansion, though I added tweak scale. No, I didn't I didn't add tweak scale to it, it already had tweak scale. I adjusted tweak scale so that I could scale them bigger. So um, yeah, uh, I scaled it to 200% and the legs look like this. Uh, can, is that good balance for it? Well, it's a very stout stage. So maybe. <laughs> um, Maybe, maybe that's good enough. All right, so, and I don't know about these fins. Uh, I have turned off roll. If there's anything I know about the fins is that when they try to control roll, it all spins out of control. So I've turned off roll on them. Uh, that's because we're going back down and Kerbal just gets all confused. Maybe I should have this controller upside down. I'll think about that. Uh, tell me what you guys think. Should I have this controller upside down? And then maybe the fins will work properly? Maybe the fins will work anyway. I don't know. I'm very suspicious suspicious of them, though. So anyway, let's go out to the launch pad and see how we do. 
a little bit off to the side. People keep asking me about the pad and stuff. Okay, so first of all, Cape Canaveral HD is available on on uh, CCAM, or you could probably get it off of GitHub, the new uh, Realism Overhaul GitHub. Uh, there is also Katniss Cape Canaveral, which is uh, Cape Canaveral HD was sort of built on top of Katniss Cape Canaveral in a way. I don't know exactly the relationship, but uh, Katniss Cape Canaveral came first and has differences. And then Cape Canaveral HD is sort of the Aro Orthodox version, as far as I can tell. Uh, so there's Cape Canaveral HD off of CCAN. And then there's Canaveral launch sites or Canaveral sites, something like that, which adds some launch sites. There's also real launch sites, which like adds the structure to pad A, uh, launch complex 39A. This is the shuttle structure from from uh, real launch relaunch sites, relaunch sites, I think it is. Uh, anyway, I did a whole video on what to do with that, so please don't ask me to do another one. Uh, and then these structures are just cobbled together. They're, if they're oriented wrong or whatever, uh, fine. They, they, they're just here very quickly, okay? Uh, they're from modular launch pads, but an old version of modular launch pads, and what I did was I turned the modular launch pads parts into Kerbal Constructs statics. And the reason I did that was so that they wouldn't flop when I launched, <laughs> basically. I was having a lot of physics problems in one version of KSP or another. I think it was KSP 1.8.1. Uh, so it's probably not a problem now, but I'm not sure. But anyway, modular launch pads was flopping around all over the place. And explosions were happening and I needed to record a video about Saturn V and Apollo and all that business. So I was fed up and so I very quickly did this. So this is not meant to be wonderful, okay? Uh, there are better ways of doing this than what I've got here. So with that being said, we're not going to the moon. We're just testing the first stage coming down. And you can see it's a very squat stage like this. So that's nice. That's nice. I don't care where I'm landing. We're just going to try and land somewhere on the premises of Cape Canaveral and then fine tune it later. So throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. Still a gradualish launch. Now, target. If you need to target Cape Canaveral, it's got a drop down list here. So you can just do that and press set, and it'll get the coordinates for somewhere in Cape Canaveral. I assume that that's actually the stock pad. That's measuring from so over there. What we will be interested in eventually is the heading to target. I don't think I got any opinions on whether to repaint the rocket into a more Blue Origin style or not. I'm probably going to create my own model for it eventually. Having a nice wide rocket like this, 10.1 meters, has its benefits. I mean, of course, the third stage isn't so wide, but I'm thinking more of launching things to lower Earth orbit. Okay, some G-force mitigation, but also looking for the stage delta V here. Well, it's not so fast, so we'll see how it does. Okay, separation. Okay, back over here, though. We'll assume for now that that works out all right. Okay, no, I still want the target. Okay. So I'm going to type in 263 here. It's, say, 10. Throttle down, get the center engines on. One minute burn time says 2,950 meters per second with what we reserved. Not too sure about the heat tolerance on any, everything. I mean, this is a FASA part. I don't know. These are my engines, so I definitely gave them a lot of heat tolerance. That's not a problem. The Kerbal Reusability Expansion landing legs, I assume, are pretty heat tolerant. Okay, it says 268 now. Alright. Let's go. A 
let's get the landing predictions. Now it's heading, it's not correcting the velocity really, but maybe I should have cancelled out all the velocity and then gone to that heading would be better. Because there's some horizontal left here. Or uh, north-south, I should say. Oh, well, that wasn't enough, was it? Well, that's not good. Well, I guess we'll have to reserve a little bit more than that, or a lot more than that. Hmm. Well, and reserving more means that the payload won't get as far, I mean, the rocket won't get as far out when we have to do stuff. So, okay. Well, initial estimate proved to be... Well, I mean, it's probably enough for the payload to get to orbit. It's just not enough for this to get back. So, revert to launch. Let's try reserving the 1,000 meters per second, though I get the feeling that we're not going to be able to get 48 tons to orbit like that. Okay, so trying to reserve, I mean, well, what 1,000 when we decouple will still end up being much more than uh, 200 more than what we saw there. So, will it be enough to land, though? Anyway, let's see. Throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. Now aiming directly for the shore is not, you know, going all the way over there, so... I'll have to burn all that way. A bit better of a trajectory this time. Well, we'll basically end up shutting everything down at the same time this time. We're only four G's. Okay, let's go for that. Well, basically 1,010. Okay. Uh, let's say 270 initially, and 10. So... 3,447 this time. Maybe some more lofting would be good. We're pretty low, 96 kilometer apoapsis right now. I mean, the retrograde marker is more like 270 something. Let me start there. And let's just go now. Okay. I'm looking at that target difference there. Okay, well, one kilometer. Warm subtropics. That's a biome? Wow. Okay. So then just SVL negative. 652 meters per second it says. Right now it's gimbling though, but still. It's, it's 10 seconds worth. Probably I should just be on two engines. Each of these generates up to, well, it doesn't say right now, but, you know, two, uh, more than 200 tons of force. And we're 185 tons. They can throttle, but it's probably still quite a lot. Now, the Blue Origin Fin style doesn't really provide air braking at all. So we're not getting extra drag from them. Well, not much extra drag from them. And the suicide burn countdown doesn't take drag into consideration, so that's another factor. Or as far as I know. Whoa. It's trending away from retrograde. Okay. Now we're getting drag. Sort of hoping it would point right at retrograde. It's probably got to be the water, isn't it? It's it's having trouble getting retrograde here. These guys. If I just nullified them. Oh. 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 Ah. Uh. 
Too late. Oh, there was an island. Oh. Well, that part survived. Okay. Well, I think we'd have enough Delta V. That just needs to be done a little bit better. Oh, this is weird. Well, faster tanks are old tanks. They have... They have latent glitchiness. Let's try that one more time. Alright. Ignition. Ignition. And launch. Maybe I should shade... Uh, not at one kilometers, but maybe three, four kilometers or something like that on the return. Okay. Okay. Reserved a little tiny bit less. Okay, let's not waste any more time. I'll start on low thrust so we can finish turning. And then full thrust. Doesn't look like it's that far from 270. But it's possible this is best left in the hands of KOS instead of me. Let's get some more decisive control over the landing location. Not ocean. Let's say there. Four kilometers? Is that good enough? I don't think the RCS is going to help much. Okay. Retrograde. Um, I'll just let the RCS do it and we're just going to fix these fins. I don't trust them. Let them just keep us pointed retrograde. Then again, that might throw off the dynamics because we were tilted away from retrograde on the last attempt. And so if we go straight retrograde this attempt, the fact that I'm shading, you know, with that difference might mean that we end up in the water again. So, who knows. But nothing blew up as far as overheating is concerned, so that's nice. And look at the positives. Also, we have a lot more left over this time, so somehow I'm doing it better. Probably because I got it a little bit higher this time. Turned a little bit sooner. Because there's a fat body thing, in general it probably doesn't need to do a entry burn like Falcon 9 does. It's more like a super heavy sort of deal. It'll get enough drag so it doesn't have to do that. I still think I'm gonna hit the water. Monsoonal tropics, seriously? Maybe you can land on the little causeway. Okay. Because they take some time to throttle up, I don't know. Is that good enough? Oh, 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 no, it's gonna go up. No, it's gonna go up. No! Okay, it was going so well. We have enough. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Gosh. And then this thing does its dance. Okay. Um, let's see if I can get the payload to orbit this time. Alright, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. Right past the speed of sound. Again, this time to orbit. Okay. Right. All right. Staging. Well, definitely lower than previously. We're going to have to keep some pitch here. Okay, so I'm gonna go with skirt step here. Oh, that got knocked by the thrust. Okay, fairing step. Ooh. Okay. Now this is more like an S2 situation when we're reserving all that fuel in the first stage. This needs to stay pitched up. 
the old S2, I mean. A little bit high here, but this is an uncertain situation. Uh, I don't think we'll be reserving enough for transferring to the moon. All right, staging. And yeah, if we take 3,100 out of this, we only have 1,100 and that's not enough to make orbit. There's a lot of refinement that could be done, but let me just try to reduce the payload a little bit. And also, we seem to be landing with a little bit extra. So maybe, maybe we can only reserve 950 down there. See if that helps. So technically, to launch Apollo, we want 45. Let's try for 45. Another thing is those controllers. We could have lighter controllers, especially on the first stage. But even the, I mean, this one would help too if the instrument unit was lighter. Don't need that much. These fins are practically useless. Uh, cut them a little bit. <laughs> uh, just to point in the right direction. The landing legs are probably a little bit heavy too, especially since they've been upscaled. Okay, we'll try for 45 tons. I really want that to work out for us. And since I'm testing this again, for now I'll skip retesting the landing. I think I sort of understand what's going on there. And maybe I'll cook up a way to have KOS do it. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. May having an extra engine or two down there might help. I thought it was a pretty good thrust weight ratio, but it sure doesn't feel like it at the start. Again, right now it's approaching two, so it must be good. It just feels slow. But the tower makes things feel slow. <laughs> I also wonder if the procedural fairings are somehow more draggy than the normal Apollo mission. Okay. That might have been a little bit early. Okay, staging, so 9.50 there. Let's just dump the skirt now. Don't know how much that weighs, but... Slightly earlier dump of fairings. Now I'll try and go lower with the apoapsis this time too. Okay, well, a little bit better than last time, but is it enough better? Well, I'll see how much we fall short by. I do think we're going to fall short. Well, it's tight. It's tight. Okay, separation and ignition. Now we're going back down a little bit, but that should be fine. Okay, and... Shut down 223 by 186. Well, 3,109 meters per second. So, I think just with a little bit of optimization as far as the trajectory is concerned, we can do it, but it's a little bit tight, so maybe we should call it 44 tons. And have them cut out something from the Apollo mission. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, it's a little bit tight right now, but it's in this ballpark. Maybe 45 tons if we really optimize the launch trajectory a little bit. Uh, we can reserve 950 meters per second in the first stage like this. If we can do the first stage return a little bit better, maybe, maybe we can uh, keep this payload a little bit easier without worrying about it. So that is the result for now. So more work needs to be, be done, obviously, but for now, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.